you can view your sites on your BlackBerry. Things like has a special view for that. Um, so as uh, as we've seen, there's there's lots of uh, lots of things that SharePoint can do. Uh, it's just getting a handle on all of them takes some time. Uh, as I said, I don't. We're only just getting started with setting up the example teams, um, getting people set up with team sites so they can start using it, getting their minds wrapped around all the things they can do. Um, that's why share, describing SharePoint can be a little complicated because there's so much it can do. Um, but it does a, a lot of really cool stuff. Okay, well let's let's go back. Now we've seen what um, what SharePoint can do. Well, let me give you a few notes uh, on installation and configuration. Um, and one really important thing you're going to want to know if you're going to use SharePoint is what version of SharePoint you want to use. There have been a number of different products out there with the SharePoint name. And you'll see references to different SharePoint things if you go searching around the internet. And you want to make sure you uh, find stuff that applies to the version you're using. Um, SharePoint stuff originally came out around 2001. There were two separate products with the SharePoint name, SharePoint Team Services and SharePoint Portal Server. Two separate products. Around 2003, Microsoft merged them together into one product, which was Windows SharePoint Services. And that's where we set up the the, um, the bottom two chunks right here, um, the, way, the way SharePoint works now is there's, there's one product, Windows SharePoint Services. That's the part that comes with Microsoft Windows Server. And that's, it's free if you have Windows Server. It comes as part of it. And then there is, um, now it's called Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. That's, an, that's something that's built, again, on top of Windows SharePoint services, and that's a version you have to pay for. So the thing to remember is if you see some old versions of Portal Server or Team Services, those are old versions. What you want to know what you want right now is either Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 or Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, just WSS or MOS. Windows SharePoint Services, that's the free one you get if you already have Windows. MOS, that's the one you have to pay extra for. It gives you lots of extra features. Now, in the demo that we gave you today, we're using all of just, just the free features that are in Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. Everything we saw, you get for free with Windows Server. Okay. Now, there are, if you go for the pay version, Microsoft Office Server, uh, SharePoint Server 2007, there are extra things that you get. And there are two versions of this pay version. There's a standard version. It gives you some extra stuff for um, managing your site, fancy content stuff. A lot of things you might use if you were you were thinking more of a traditional website, managing a lot of web pages and content like that. Uh, it has a My Sites feature, so every person in your organization can have their own site if you really want that. Uh, fancier stuff for working with user profiles, uh, better integration with Active Directory uh, for users' information. Audience targeting, so you can have different... Um, Parts of, your, parts of your site only show up for different users. Um, Pre-built workflows, we talked about workflows a little bit. It has a lot more options for working with workflows. Um, more templates and web parts, um, more pre-built stuff, so you don't have to build a lot of stuff yourself. Uh, the enterprise version uh, gives you some really fancy stuff. Um, I mentioned those info path forms. I'll let you do those in your browser where people are comfortable with it rather than starting up this info path application that people haven't seen before. Uh, it gives you business data connections, which is a fancy way of saying uh, you can connect your SharePoint list to your own custom databases. Say you have your own database in a SQL server or MySQL somewhere, such as your case management server, for example. You can connect those to SharePoint so you can see data from those databases right there in your SharePoint site. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, other fancy stuff, they have business intelligence dashboards, key performance indicators, spreadsheet management, and even more web parts. Um, Eventually, we want to go with getting the enterprise version so we can do some, some nicer stuff with the forms uh, and with the business data connections. Uh, but we're, we're, we're building off of the free version right now. Okay? Uh, if you want to go with the pay version or research some prices on TechSoup, all of the, the standard and the enterprise versions are available through TechSoup fairly inexpensively. These are really good prices. Um, you have to get the server license and then just a client license for each person. One trick with if you want to go the enterprise version, you have to get both a standard license and an enterprise license for each person. So you have to get both of those for each person. 
uh, but it's still fairly fairly inexpensive, um, especially for the legal aids in, in Ohio. It shouldn't cost too much to get the fancy version of it. But of course, you don't have to start with the fancy version. You can start with that that free version like we have, test it out, and if you like it, then you can pay get the pay version and install that on top of it. One other key thing to remember, since unfortunately SharePoint gets gets a little complex in all the things you have to install, um, if you want to do searching with SharePoint, you have to add some extra stuff to it. Uh, the free version, Windows SharePoint Services, right off the beginning, you can only search within SharePoint, just within the databases you've defined in SharePoint. Um, if you have the pay version, Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, it can also search your network shares as well. But Microsoft just recently came out with the best option, which is Search Server 2008. And that can search just about everything. It can search your SharePoint sites, your network servers, as federated search, which can go and search just about anything. Um, and the nice thing about it is it's free. Um, if you're, it's, you can upgrade either version of uh, SharePoint, the pay version, the free version, to use Search Server. Um, you can install the Search Server 2008 Express. That's the free version of Search Server. You can put that on the free version of SharePoint. And that's what we're using right now. It works great. Uh, if you have the pay version of SharePoint, you just install a little update and you get some of those extra features that Search Server has. So you get really nice, uh, really nice search for free, basically. The pay version of Search Server, the only reason you'd want that if you, if you need uh, multiple servers doing your indexing or searching, things like that, which we haven't found that to be necessary. Um, okay. Uh, unfortunately, installing SharePoint can be, uh, can be quite a task. I've, <laughs> just to give you an idea, I've shown you some of the scenarios you might have to do um, if you're going to install SharePoint, if you're using the free version here, there's lots of stuff you got to do. Uh, of course, you have to have Windows Server 2003 at least. SQL Server is optional. You can use the Windows internal database that comes with SharePoint if you want to. We're using SQL Server 2000 because we already have that. You have to configure IIS, set up the .NET framework, install I'll call it service packs, of course. You have to set up different service accounts that SharePoint needs, which is pretty tricky. Uh, of course, install SharePoint, install SharePoint ser service pack, we install Search Server Express. There's some infrastructure updates you have to install, and then some cumulative updates you have to install. And then if you go with the paid version, there's even more things you have to set up. So there's lots of stuff you have to do to set it up. Um, so my tips are is do a lot of research first. There's a lot of stuff you can read out there about how to set it up. And I'm going to be putting together some a separate uh, sheet of tips and stuff uh, to get you guided on some good websites to read. But my main recommendation, recommendation is do what we did. I set up a virtual PC where I duplicated our environment, where I installed Windows Server and SQL Server on that virtual PC, and then I installed SharePoint and Search Server and did lots of testing on it to see how I wanted to configure things, see how all the pieces had to go together so that I get a system that worked that didn't give me errors as soon as I went to the website. So do lots of, lots of testing like that. It can take quite a while to get things set up, to know how you want to get things set up. But once you're there, um, Maintaining your site is, is pretty simple. Um, one other thing to consider is before you go live, if you're using Firefox, there's some gotchas with SharePoint. Um, SharePoint, the default, kind of the default setup for Share, SharePoint usually requires you to authenticate. You saw that, that menu that was in the upper right corner. It had my Share, welcome SharePoint administrator. It knows who you are because it uses the, you know, the username and password you've used to log on to your local Windows network. Firefox, by default, uh, will prompt you every time you go to the SharePoint site. Internet Explorer will just smoothly integrate. It won't prompt you. It knows who you are. Firefox prompts you every time. You got to do a preference thing to turn that off. Firefox, by default, won't let, you, won't let you click on links to local files on your network, the links that SharePoint will have. You have to do a, a configuration option to turn that on. And also, the big thing is Firefox doesn't integrate well with a lot of the Microsoft Office integration features, like the checkouts and the editing of the documents out of document libraries. You have to use Internet Explorer to do that. If you use Firefox, they just don't work. Um, what we did, rather than worrying about changing all those Firefox configurations, we used a, a Firefox extension called IE Tab, where you set it up so that any time you go to a particular site, inside the Firefox window, rather than being the Firefox you know, rendering and all that, it actually runs Internet Explorer inside the Firefox window. And users don't even know that's happening. So you're actually, you are you're using Internet Explorer inside Firefox, so everything just works, and users don't know what's happening. And that's very easy to set up, actually. 